Hey you, yeah you who clicked on this video, thanks for giving our channel a shot. And if you will, please do us the honor of watching the video all the way through. Appreciate it. Now on to the video. So, Disney Plus has finally dropped uh, the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. And I know that this video is late, but it took a minute because, number one, uh, Disney uh, loves to copyright claim a, a person's entire video. Uh, for maybe 10 seconds of footage uh, and so that just can't be allowed and number two is because I really just I was very indifferent on how I wanted to approach uh, talking about this series so we're talking about episode one which is just named part one on this and honestly I wanted to originally do a recap of this like you know just like almost like a scene for scene recap but it just didn't seem appropriate and the reason why is just because uh i find that the obi-wan show um is dumb as fuck and this is why so i don't mind uh per se when you you know play around in sandboxes as long as you a uh respect the rules and respect the lore which disney never does especially not with star wars and b uh when the choices that are made both from a dialogue standpoint and just from a moment to moment standpoint makes sense and disney basically fails the smell test on all of the above criteria let's talk about it so the episode starts out fine enough i mean you know you have uh basically a flashback which is you know surprise surprise a flashback of reva's childhood reva being the third sister and uh the main antagonist so far of this series and ultimately really the main character but that's something that we'll get into a bit later now uh we see her childhood uh she was a padawan um, on coruscant and then when order 66 comes down her instructor tries bravely to save her and the other younglings and fails so now we are brought to obi-wan and well actually we're, we're really just brought to tatooine and you know we we see where everybody's landed where everybody ends up but the story really begins in a cantina in Tatooine where the Inquisitors, led by the Grand Inquisitor, are searching for uh, Jedi and Force Sensitives. And they, they go on this really long diatribe about how the Jedi can't help but help other people, and that's basically how they'll be caught. And, you know, the Third Sister does something really cool in this scene, where she lures out the Jedi by putting one of the people in mortal danger. And so we see that scene playing out here. Now, this is fine, you know. Uh, obviously, she knows that the Jedi is going to uh, do something about it, and he does. And so, you know, we are treated to this scene where we see the young Jedi, uh, you know, stopping the blade from hitting the, uh, the bartender at the cantina. All good, all good. So once they identify who he is, of course, the next objective is for the Inquisitors to capture him. Now, being that there are three Inquisitors, you would think that, you know, capturing this one Jedi might not even be a Jedi Knight fully, but he, you know, he would be easy to capture. But, you know, let's not do that. But instead, let's, you know, take away our... Uh, point of information which would be this Jedi let's not capture him let's not uh, you know use enhanced interrogation techniques on this particular uh, Jedi but rather let's um, do the thing that we're not supposed to do and go ahead and try oops, and kill him yeah that that's what we'll do we'll try to kill him and it just really kind of I don't know. It, it really just takes everything out of pocket. Reva is out of pocket from the moment, you know, we start out with her. She just, she's just doing the most. It, even to the point where she has to be checked by multiple co-workers, uh, namely her supervisor, <laughs> the Grand Inquisitor, has to check her and stop her from killing, you know, their very source of information. They're called Inquisitors, not necessarily Executioners. That comes later. But the first thing you do is you interrogate the subject. But rather, you know, the Grand Inquisitor says let him go because he figures that they'll lead, uh, he'll lead them to another Jedi or maybe even a bunch of them. So one of the things that I don't like about the Reva character 
or at least how they have her portrayed uh everybody else kind of has to change the way that they speak more or less uh to fit the world of star wars but the reva character the her her the way she delivers her lines the way the actress delivers the lines in particular uh it just comes off as not of the world and you know i don't know i've never seen moses ingram uh, who plays reva in any other uh work so i don't know how she acts other than this i don't know if this was direction by the showrunner but the way that she delivers lines she sounds like an around the way girl all day but she doesn't sound like she belongs in a galaxy far far away and that's just you know that might be me just you know being nitpicky but it just every time she delivers her lines and it, it becomes more apparent uh as the episode progresses it's just one of those things that just really i don't know just got me to thinking about it but the the writing in the show is just kind of dumb like she's she's not particularly um smart about what she's doing but you know it's it's just one of those things so we we go into more of where obi-wan has landed we see uh you know luke's progression because 10 years have passed and you know we just get more of a feel for what's going on in the world but you know one thing that just irks me is when we have flashback sequences especially if they're point of view like let's say a character like obi-wan is having a nightmare everything that he experiences for the most part is going to be from his point of view and yet uh, at one point they show memories like from anakin's perspective so you know like when anakin is uh young anakin is taking down the droid ship uh in episode one obi-wan wasn't a part of that he's fighting darth maul all the time so why would you show this and then you know they do the same thing that they did in falcon and winter soldier where at the end of endgame if you recall uh steve rogers gives uh, sam wilson the shield and you know basically he's like yo you're the new captain america now and you know then captain america and the winter soldier opens and it's not that way and they basically are fabricating um some sort of inner turmoil in order to uh add drama to the series even though it shouldn't have really played out that way and the same thing happens here at the end of revenge of the sith you recall that yoda tells obi-wan that you know they're basically going to fall back and to pass the time yoda is going to teach uh obi-wan how to commune with qui-gon jinn his former master and then we're here we are 10 years later and you know we're treated to this scene uh which is essentially just obi-wan kind of having a nightmare waking up and then you know calling out for qui-gon it, it makes no logical sense whatsoever but it happens anyway and it's just it, it, it just boggles the mind as to why this would happen does he not understand how to do uh what yoda said he was going to teach him how to do like what what's the the significance of him just kind of waking up and calling out for master like it just it's it's weird it, it definitely is strange and it just i don't know it just rubbed me the wrong way uh so you know i don't know so then you know things happen and we <sighs> Like I say, at Disney Star Wars, they never give you an explanation for how the plot moves along. Like, things just happen and you're just expected to just deal with it. So, uh, here's another example of that. So, what we have here is uh, the young uh, Jedi who we saw in the cantina. Uh, he, you know, made it out. And he doesn't know if the Inquisitors are following him. But he somehow stumbles upon Obi-Wan, which makes very little sense in of itself. Because as we know, uh, Obi-Wan is deep, deep, deep in the deserts of Tatooine. It's not like he's easy to find. Like, there's no GPS on Obi-Wan. There's no Find My Jedi app. Like, none of that's going on right now. And yet, he just kind of stumbles upon Obi-Wan and is like, hey, man, you know, we, we can help each other out. We can help. And, you know, Obi-Wan's like, you know, calm yourself down, fall back homie and then obi-wan gives him a box tells him to bury it deep in the desert if he wants to help and then you know hide out live a normal life chill out because the fight's over we lost and we see this defeatist mentality from obi-wan and it's really just annoying because they keep doing this with the legacy characters in star wars it's like they can't leave the legacy characters alone but they still manage to kind of have to 
I don't know, uh, reach back into that particular toolbox because, let's face it, they don't have anything else. I mean, the sequel trilogy is trash and nobody really wants to see that ever, 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 ever again. And, you know, it's just one of those things where we're really just trying to jingle the keys and bring out the nostalgia bait so that uh, people will you know, maybe pay attention to Star Wars again like they used to. So now we get more uh, third sister Reva action and it's just, you know, it's just becoming a little bit more annoying uh, because, again, she's just completely like out of pocket like she's uncontrollable and she's just she has no self-control at all uh so you know we're we're in the town square in tatooine i guess this is maybe mos eisley or most best but not really sure but we're you know she's looking for more jedi as you know is her role and of course they've already lost one so apparently they didn't do the smart thing and just follow uh that idiot uh so you know, instead of saying, hey, everybody, uh, we uh, we got some, you know, we're looking for some Jedi. So if you guys know anything about them, uh, let us know. There will be a reward for you, even if you're going to kill whoever gives you the information. The point is, is that you, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. But, you know, Reva is all vinegar. That's that's all she has. Uh, as referenced here, she literally removes a woman's entire hand. Um you know, just because the woman started speaking up, like this wasn't necessary. And these people are already poor. They have very little to lose in general. So you, you know, just being as cruel as humanly possible doesn't endear yourself. And at this point, fifth brother like has to check her, you know, like chill out, bro. And then, you know, she starts getting in uh, Owen's face, you know, and threatening him in front of everybody like this is going to make everybody snitch on on what you know on if there are any more jedi around and obviously this is counterproductive and you know she just like i say she's not very even as a villain villains can still be somewhat relatable and likable but she's just not and you know coupled with a lot of other decisions that are made this just hurts the series that much more and just really kind of brings to light that these these efforts by disney not just with star wars but with marvel are just almost like they're just churning out you know these these prefabricated products and not really paying attention to how these characters are crafted how they come across and you know and honestly this just reeks uh, honestly this reeks of kathleen kennedy like normally you know, just like with the book of Boba Fett, you know, you guys know how I get down. If Dave Filoni and John Favreau are to blame, you know, they're not beyond reproach. But we know who is behind this nonsense. And it's definitely, oh, cray cray KK all day long. And it just you can see it with almost every shot that involves uh, this Reva character. And it's, it's just really, it's really kind of sad because, you know, if you're going to do representation, you could have really had a cool character because this character is honestly, uh, you know, it's an original character. And you know my thing. I don't like reskinned characters. I don't, I don't deal with tokenized characters. And I definitely don't deal with uh, race and gender swaps. But when you have an original character, you know, do them right. Don't, don't make them a caricature. Don't make them this mustache, twirly, angsty, you know, early Marvel style villain. Give them, this is Star Wars. Give them some, you know, some, some breadth. Give them some, some depth to the character. And they're just not really doing that here. And it definitely shows through. So, uh, let's see. Then, you know, we we are we go to Alderaan and we are with a very mischievous Leia who's also, uh, you know, more of an important character than Obi-Wan because we know at this point that Obi-Wan is a uh, is a guest star on his own show. So this is just more just stupidity here. So we see that, you know, young Leia has a penchant for mischief. She likes to get in trouble. All right, fine, whatever. But when she is confronted with these kidnappers, we get these just really baffling choices like this here. Um, if you're looking at this here, this right here, she is a small child. 
Her legs can't be more than maybe a foot and a half in length. These are grown men. They are running in a straight line. And you can, if you watch this in motion, you can tell that they're slowing themselves down so that it can appear like she's running faster. But her little legs can only take her so far. And this is just more stupidity. Like, have her zigzag. Have her do some things that get her out of the way. But this running in a straight line and then showing them behind her is just stupid. And it makes, again, it, you're, you're treating the audience as if we're stupid. She's a little girl. I have children. I, I There's no way that when my children were this small, they were going to outrun me or get away from me in any actual way, uh, you know, unless I was allowing it. And this definitely shows through here. And more importantly, the, the real, real just thing that just gets in my craw here is that the parents, uh, you know, Senator Organa and his wife know for a fact that Leia likes to get into trouble. Where is her security detail? Where is it? Where is it? This should have somebody on her 24-7 knowing that, you know, anybody finding out who she is or what she can do could equal death not only for her, but for them and for probably the citizens of Alderaan. So, again, it's just more stupid uh, decisions when it comes to the storytelling of this series. And it, it just doesn't get better in this episode. And I just really don't understand why uh, this needs to be this way. So uh, then, you know, some, some more stuff happens. Uh, she gets kidnapped, obviously. Uh, Bail Organa is now pleading with Obi-Wan uh, as to whether or not he's going to, you know, g give up the hermit life, leave his charge, which is Luke, and go and clean up Bail Organa's mess. And he tries to make it sound like this is Obi-Wan's problem, when it definitely isn't. This is your problem, sir. You couldn't keep up with a 10-year-old girl, not Obi-Wan Kenobi. So obviously he Obi-Wan's like, you know, find a bounty hunter. He's telling him. See, the thing that, uh, that also pisses me off is that the, the smart decisions are talked about but never executed. Obi-Wan says, find a bounty hunter, hire somebody. She couldn't have got too far. Just, you know, I can't do this because I have a job to do here, which is take care of this boy. And Obi-Wan knows that the Inquisitors are on Tatooine and they're not just hunting Jedi, but any force sensitive. Either you're going to get down with the Inquisition or, you know, worse yet, you're going to end up, uh, you know, dead. And so this just really speaks to uh, the stupidity of what's going on in a lot of these scenes and a lot of the story decisions that are made. So then we see uh, more of what's going on and we get uh, the scene in which uh, we see that the young Jedi has indeed been captured by the Inquisitors and summarily executed. So, you know, Obi-Wan here is really just, you know, reeling from this and you can tell that uh, that this has affected him. Um, and he's probably questioning himself as to whether or not this was the right thing to do. But he knows who caught him and he knows what happened. So, you know, then, you know, we get this weird, you know, scene where Bail Organa in person goes to find Obi-Wan. Now, he couldn't have spent this time, you know, I don't know, trying to locate his daughter or fix the mess that he created. No, 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 no. No, he needed to come and see Obi-Wan in person to guilt trip him into, uh, you know, somehow uh, going up and cleaning up his mess. And this, you know, obviously Obi-Wan knew that this wasn't the right call, but he does it anyway. And, you know, decides to listen to Bail Organa. And then he does another stupid thing that, again, makes no sense within the context. So he is now digging up. Uh, the box that he had the young man uh, bury in the ground. Now, he doesn't know when the Inquisitors caught him. He doesn't know if they caught him while he was burying this. He doesn't know if they caught him shortly thereafter or if they just waited, watched him bury it, and then caught him as he was leaving. None, they don't know anything. They don't know if they, He doesn't know if there's surveillance uh, on this thing, but yet he goes out into the desert, digs it up without any regard as to whether or not he could be discovered. And, you know, again, this is just more stupidity. So he digs up the lightsabers and, you know, then it's just like I say, it's just one thing after another with this with 
the storytelling in this series it, it just doesn't make sense with what these characters who've been known to be smart in the past would do then we find out who uh the actual kidnapper is and we find out that the kidnapper is indeed uh reva herself and you know who with the way that she's been acting uh how can we be surprised that it's her of course it's her why wouldn't it be right because you know she's been doing things you know without any type of authorization thus far so why not just go you know all in just go whole hog because why not so we get to this point in time and you know it's it's fine but what really just puts the icing on the stupid cake here is that uh obi-wan uh at the end of the series literally flashes his lightsaber for everyone to see so now if anybody had the inclination to snitch and find another jedi and possibly get paid they have ample reason because he has literally flashed his lightsaber and now they could tell them not only what the man looks like but they could also tell you what ship he's going on and where he's headed to but again you know far be it for me or or for disney to do what makes sense no 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 we have to again do these stupid little plot contrivances that are supposed to pull at the heartstrings rather than make any logical sense whatsoever so uh you know with that being said guys tell me what you thought of this episode in the comment section um you know uh tell me whether or not you think that i'm right or wrong on this one we'll see you on the next one 8-bit heroes out peace If you'd like to get a shout out on the channel, then hit that like button, maybe share it with a couple of friends, and do us the biggest honor of all, and subscribe to the channel so you can join the 8-Bit Heroes family. And while you're at it, hit that bell icon so you can be notified when our new videos come out.